Hey, hey everybody, while you're getting your food and before we start, uh, Denise would like to make an announcement. While you're eating your lunch, real quick, there's an envelope on your table with some letters inside it. As team members, try to unscramble those letters into a word because you will be helping me give my presentation. Dun, dun, dun. Let's all help Denise and unscramble your letters. So you don't, yeah, you press that button. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Spell anything you want. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lunches. It's Taco Tuesday, so I want to thank Amanda for making sure we all have lunch again for our first all knowledge of spring. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> anyway, welcome back, everybody, to our spring semester. I hope that you're a bit refreshed, although I know it's second week in the classes, so it's hectic again. But I hope you had a nice holiday with your family and friends and back into the swing of things. It's great to see you all here. We have a really full agenda, so I'm gonna just get started pretty quickly here, but I want to continue with what we started last time um, in introducing our new employees. So we have quite a few, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start. And I want to, um, she's not new to the college, but I wanna welcome her into her new position. She's already taken off just like crazy doing a wonderful job. So our interim director of the Public Information Office, Amanda. Yeah. This is a big introduction day for Amanda. All the uh, with the chamber of Barstow Chamber met this morning, so everybody got to welcome her to the community of Barstow as well. Um, so we have several other employees. So um, Melissa, do you mind starting? Because yeah, I know sure. you've got some and there's other folks. So yeah. welcome up. So we have two new student success advisors for student success and equity. We have Chad Shipley and So we have Chad Shipley and Lauren Jackson. So we have Lucia De La Rosa over here, and she's located in the Student Services Resource Information Center, and it's right there, right in front of the admissions director's office. And we have three new full-time tents. I'm gonna have to make them stand up because we're used to standing in front of people. Chris Holt in the yellow right here. <laughs> and the <three> next <laughs> Chris Nelbanian, chemistry. <laughs> Nelson Ramos, math. And we always have a few part-time faculty who come and visit. Um, I'm going to point out some people don't know them. They're not new exactly, but they're not faces you recognize. Mr. Jason L. Herbley. I don't know why I want to call you Mr. Jason Herbley. And Mr. Chris Parker. Okay, Parker. I'm going to give you my name. And if I had missed anybody, I'm sorry. And over here we have, um, that started in January, um, we have our uh, temp, she had um, started out at Tempting for Access, and now she is our full-time Access Secretary, Courtney Rustica. 
And we have some of you may know her, of course, she's been here a while um, as the PIO secretary first, DOPS secretary, and now she is the new student success advisor for basic needs, and that's Joanna Escalante. I think that's everybody, right? Well, thank you and welcome all of our new faculty and staff. It's wonderful to have you here. We hope that you have a wonderful experience with us. Let's see. We're coming. Yeah, look at that. You are on it. So, all right, have our. Well, there's no need for an introduction. No, there's not. I need to shoot. <laughs> so we're here to tell everyone that we've got a faculty retreat coming up on January 25th and 26th. We start each morning bright and early at 9 a.m. despite Nancy's best efforts to get us to start at 8. So you're welcome. So we expect to see all you faculty there at 9 a.m. on Friday. Okay. And we're going to end the day by 5 because we have a celebration at 6. Okay. So we have our, our big, a big celebration. <laughs> I thought I was talking to <laughs> Are you sure it's only the second week, Dr. Bag? Yeah. <laughs> the second month of the second semester. I'm on meds. <laughs> so, and then we're going to go back uh, Saturday morning at 9, and we're going to finish up by 2 faculty. So, we will see you there. Um, Nance has more details like food, hotel, and mileage. Right. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to send out another email. I'm going to ask specifics of everyone. First, if you can identify if you're going to be at both days or just one day and which day it might be. I also need you to identify if you're going to be able to attend on Friday evening for our curriculum reset celebration. Um, dinner will be provided by the college. However, alcohol beverages will be on your own. Um, I also need to know about anybody with special diets. If you are gluten free, if you are vegetarian, if you are vegan, whatever it might be, so that we are uh, we ensure that we provide the proper food choices for all of you. And if you are over 50 miles from your home to the college, the college will pay for your room. They will pay your mileage on Friday to come to the college. If you stay the night, then they'll pay your mileage to go back on Saturday. If you are one that is within the 50 miles, you will get mileage to and from on both days. Okay? So why should they come, Nance? <laughs> because. <laughs> Go for it. So why should they come, Nance? Go for it. I'm going for it? No. <laughs> because we're going for guided pathways. Yay. Yay. Okay? Just guided pathways, so two year plans, they all kind of roll into each other. We have um, on the board agenda for tomorrow evening approval by the board. We are going to be having facilitators who are going to be helping each area. We have asked that a counselor and a full-time faculty. Discipline faculty. Discipline faculty. Counselors are faculty. Oh my gosh. Yes, we're that technical. Okay. Okay, so we're doing facilitators, two, two faculty members is what she's saying, a counselor and a discipline area expert. We're going to roll out six areas that we rolled out at our last faculty retreat last spring. So we are and rolling wanted, on. And I wanted to share, Emily, are you here? No, but maybe you're watching from Fort Irvine. Yeah. Emily spent the weekend, she's created boards for every discipline. And we've also created um, each course for every discipline, as well as courses for all of the GE and multiple courses for GE. So that when we meet on Friday and Saturday, you are going to have a visual, because I'm a very hands-on kind of person, so I need to be able to play with it and move it around. The, uh, the individual courses that might link to my child development I'm, are going to be velcroed and I can move them around the board. The same with the GE. You will all have that same ability to do that as well because this is going to be a working retreat for all of us. Will we get it completely finished? No. I doubt it. Well, maybe. Maybe for your discipline. Maybe for your discipline, but not necessarily for GE, because that encompasses a lot more work. 
This is too We're rolling, we're going to be done, because the counselors are going to be there and they're going to crack the whip. BP King says no, but watch. We'll get this done. We're good. We, we are good. Our faculty are amazing. So we will we will get a big chirp done. I'm not gonna guarantee all of it. I disagree. <laughs> Thank you. Question. Question from the party animal. Yes, sir. Joseph. <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> you know, I, I want to acknowledge the work of uh, Beverly and Nance. Um, you know, she mentioned that we're bringing an MOU to the board tomorrow night in order to be able to support the work that faculty are doing. And I just want to acknowledge the care with which they prepared the rationale um, to, to bring this forward on behalf of faculty so that you are supported in doing this really important work. And what it's been such a pleasure to see how our faculty here at the college um, have embraced guided pathways, not because um, there's money that's coming from the state or because the chancellor has basically made it the framework that he's looking to see that we implement. But mostly what I have heard is because our faculty, faculty can see that it's really good for our students. It will clarify their choices, help streamline the path, and provide the support to keep them moving along towards the completion of their degrees and certificates and transfer and on to jobs. So it's all for the right reasons, and I really appreciate our faculty leadership in making sure that you can help support your colleagues in doing this good work for our students. So thank you both. And next, it's my pleasure to introduce you, introduce to you Professor Denise Pasley. And I recently learned of this really cool program that um, she's putting together. So I asked if she wanted to share it with you. So um, Denise, I'm going to if you went, but she's going to talk. There you are. Going to talk about the Barstow College Creativity and Innovation Summit. Sounds pretty cool. It sounds like Silicon Valley or something, right? Yeah. So, Denise, you want to here? You want to walk around? Good afternoon. <laughs> the top one? The side. The side. Okay. Um, I want to thank you all for listening to me because this is something that has been brewing in my head for a long time. And um, I, when I first came to Barcelona, I always thought there's so much room for growth here. We have wonderful students. There's opportunities for um, businesses and everything here in the community and I thought how could I do something to help you know move that forward so I see this as an entire college event I don't see it as my event because as you all know entrepreneurs are everywhere okay so um, I want to just briefly tell you about this hopefully it's brief because I do talk a lot when I get in class but this isn't class Okay, so you already did the 90 second scramble. So, um, table one, what was your word? Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. An entrepreneur, you know, the word entrepreneur comes from French, and it is, it means to do something in French or to undertake. So, um, a lot of the people who are here right now, including myself, we're not entrepreneurs because basically entrepreneurs are business people. But we do the very same thing in our work that entrepreneurs do. Um, the only difference between me and a person who owns a business is what? They make money. They make money, but I make money too. Okay? Yeah, it might seem like I don't, but what's the, <laughs> I, I, I think I try to look like I do. But <laughs> any, any other guesses? They're their own boss, but they take the larger risks. We, table two, what's your word? We are, I am an entrepreneur because I use those same skills that entrepreneurs use in order to be able to be creative and innovative and all of that for Barstow Community College. And a lot of people um, are not going to take the financial risk 
they're going to want to go into uh, business and work for someone else. So don't think of yourself as not doing all those things because you're not taking that financial risk. And that's what I want to impart on our students. You're going to be doing all the same thing. You either going to do it for yourself or you're going to do it for someone else. Table three, what was your word? Creativity. And that's what I'm looking for. And that's the ability to use imagination to produce work. We have to start thinking, and what we're trying to do is get our students to start thinking about how can I make this better? What can I do more? What what I have. So the next table four, what was your word? Innovation. Innovation. Innovation is the capacity to develop new ideas. Okay, so here's something here. I want to take it. How can I change it? So um, this event is intended to help our students learn about their, um, the skills employers want and um, from employers in the industry. So we have to connect with these employers in order to know what they want. Okay, and so how do we do that? Table five. What's your word? Summit. 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 We have a summit. Yay! <laughs> this event will be a place for students to dialogue with entrepreneurs in their career area of interest. So let's get the entrepreneurs together with our students and let's talk. Table six. What was your word? Networking. Networking. And when we talk, they network. You know, one of the things um, that many of my students are afraid of is they're afraid to oops go back oops, oops of that oh, oh, oh. okay network <laughs> one of the students my uh, one of the things my students uh, tell me all the time is they're afraid to talk to people we have to get our students used to talking to people and um, I always tell my students in class I didn't grow up like this I had to keep talking in front of people in order to get better talking in front of people. Um, CIS is what I'm calling it for short, will provide an opportunity for students to exchange information um, with entrepreneurs and make professional contacts. And I think the more they talk to entrepreneurs and business owners, they'll say, they'll realize they're people like you and me, okay? And a lot of entrepreneurs want to share what they have. So table seven, even though I gave you a peek, what, what was your word? empowerment. Doing so will help our students grow personally and professionally and realize table number eight what was your word? Opportunities. Opportunities. And these are the circumstances that make it possible to go back to the meaning of entrepreneurship which is to do something. Okay? So here's the kind of general um, way this is going to work. It's four Thursdays during the college hour. And what I've done is broken it down. Now, if I've left out any discipline, just tell me. I don't, you know, we'll stick it in there. I realized a little bit later that on my flag I left out the arts. How could I possibly leave out the arts? Sorry about that, Amy. But um, I put them on the last day. But what I did is the first week is um, homegrown. What I wanted to do was have those entrepreneurs who are from the area, born and raised here, had businesses for years, and highlight them. Uh, we have a kickoff speaker that day, and that person is a student that used to, a person that used to go here and is now a professional up in San Francisco. He's going to come down here just to talk to our students and, and um, share his, uh, his experiences. Then the second Thursday, and of course this is from the, at the college hour, the second Thursday I put hospitality, tourism, retail, cosmetology, and we are looking for, and I'll, I'll talk about what we're looking for as far as this is concerned when I get there. Um, and then the fourth Thursday I have nonprofits, volunteer organization, health and fitness, and financial services. And then um, on Thursday, April 11th, we have um, the focus of STEM, child care, and I put the arts on there, okay? Um, what I need you to do is help me. 
find entrepreneurs because I have been here for in and out. I was an adjunct for several years, but I just been completely in Barso for like three years. This is one of my fourth year. And so I don't know all the entrepreneurs. I, and you guys, a lot of you live here, been here. You know the people who uh, have been running the businesses. So if you could talk to them and help uh, me get them involved here at the college, that would be great. On the first day, we're not gonna. We, we're only looking for table presenters because we have the kickoff speaker. On the second, um, third, and fourth day, um, we have a couple of people who have said they would be highlighted speakers, and those are people who will talk about five or ten minutes. And then we're going to have a panel where we'll have um, entrepreneurs who will ask questions that have been. Um, that are prepared in advance so that we don't waste time. So I'm going to list uh, my students to give me questions. If you have students or people who have questions, you can direct them to me and then I can type them up um, within the four days, that um, within the four um, three panel days. And they can, um, that way we can read them and they can answer them and it won't take a whole lot of time. Um, on the fourth day, uh, um, we have on April 4th and April 11th, we already have highlighted speakers. So I'm looking for panel members and um, table presenters. What the table presenters will do is set up and just talk. I want to have 10 tables around in the lobby where um, they can just talk to um, the students. There is no selling here. So we're not, this is not about setting up tables to sell your wares. This is about setting up to talk to students about what it means to be an entrepreneur, what kind of skills they want, how they can improve themselves, and to make those connections, those relationships that a lot of students don't have and um, wish they had. So now we're going to bring them together. If anybody's interested, I even gave out my cell phone number. Now you know this is important to me. If I gave my, my cell phone number, so feel free. And I get some of the weirdest phone calls, you know, those robo things. Now I have to answer every call, whether I uh, know the number or not. But please, if you know anyone, um, I would like to have pretty much be filled up by February 22nd because then I don't have to worry about, oh, the past minute. Of course, there's going to be people who say they can and, and they can't. You know, I understand that. But at that point, um, we'll work through that. Uh, this is pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, and I, like I said, I've been thinking about this for a long time. And I thank you guys in advance for all your help. And I wanted to do one more thing. I wanted to um, talk about my club real quick, thank my club members, because so they'll be here every day. Um, they're the Collegiate Entrepreneurship Organization. They'll be here each one of those days with a table to tell you about our club. I want to add a thank Student Success and Equity, because if it weren't for them, you know, they looked at my dream and they said, okay, we can help you. I like that. Um, and I want to thank to um, creativity and innovative and innovation planning. We had a little planning team, and I all of you guys know who you are, and I want to thank you for that. And um, anybody else, like uh, Glenn, who puts up with every crazy question that I have to ask about everything, uh, thank you in advance. Thank you so much. I really look forward to this and encourage people to contact Denise, how generous she was in sharing her cell phone number. She's very serious about this, and I expect it's going to be a great success. Wonderful opportunity for students and the, the club members as well. Thank you, Denise. Uh, next, we have an update on technology on campus. So, Dr. Finley, welcome you up. I'm actually going to take advantage of the moment to introduce our new employee and uh, our new director of information technology, Bryce Christophe. And 
in fact, he, was, he gave me this really long list, and I said, you know, this is a lot of stuff. Maybe this would be a good opportunity for you to speak with the folks out there directly, because if they have questions, you'll be much better able to answer them. So I'm going to turn this over to Bryce, but kind of hang out over here. Thank you. It's not as long a list as Brenda made it out to be. <laughs> um, the first one is the network outage this week. So we're actually doing work on our core switch. And I know it sounds like a lot of IT stuff, but basically what it means is we'll have 10 gig speeds in between the buildings at the columns. So that means faster network and a more reliable network. Unfortunately, that means we have to bring everything down. However, um, what we did plan from Friday at 8 p.m. to Monday, there were some concerns about students in Canvas and our website, so we compacted it. We compacted it down to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., so three hours. Um, as far as anything else, we have our site-wide refresh, so it's all your computers have been replaced. We're actually at 98%. The only ones that haven't been replaced are certain access computers that have programs that aren't Windows 10 compatible, and IT is working on finding alternative solutions. Um, Fort Irwin technology update. We had some faculty, some VPs come to us with the concern of Fort Irwin not having the technology needed to support the students. Um, luckily, we were already on top of that, and as of yesterday, all the technology has been delivered to the college. We just have to assemble it. What that, basically, what that means is every classroom in Fort Irwin will have at least an instructor station that will include a brand new PC, a 55-inch TV, and a wireless display. So teachers can all come in there, they can use their laptops, they can use the computer there, and they'll be able to teach a little bit more effectively. Um, also, dedicated conference rooms. So this is one we're just starting on. This is, oh, yep. When? When? For, oh, for Irwin? Yeah, faculty. Um, as far as getting stuff out to Fort Irwin, it'd be faster if you helped. <laughs> <laughs> if you helped us assemble it. Oh. <laughs> no. Uh, so, <laughs> no, I think got it covered. We have Lynn and Tim and Justin. They've been very good. Um, so we won't have two for them. <laughs> so I would say maybe a week, two weeks, we'll have the technology out there. And we really worked hard to make this as user friendly as possible. So this should be no different than getting on your computer at home, anywhere. It's going to be a wireless transfer. So basically, you'll have a podium like this. You'll have a wireless mouse and keyboard. You'll have a 55-inch TV. When you move your mouse, it shows up on the, key on the TV. All right, so dedicated conference rooms. Um, this doesn't hurt faculty as much, but just whenever we have conferences, that we need a video, uh, bring in Confer Zoom. Confer Zoom and stuff like that. We have to lug around a cart that looks like what Flynn has, set it all up, and then sometimes it doesn't work and you can't hear people, and it's just kind of really unprofessional. So we worked on that and um, we ordered all the technology so we'll have dedicated conference centers. So you can just come in there, you can start your Confer Zoom, and you know it's going to work. You don't need really need IT help. We're still there to help if you can't get it going, but that shouldn't be the problem. Um, another one on the software side is Banner 9 update. So as of today, we are on Banner, I'm just gonna say Banner I and B because people understand what that is. We're completely on it except for one form that only admissions and records use and IT uses. So everybody else, Banner 9. Um, as far as for students, that's the SSB side, that's the fresh side. <coughs> We are planning to officially go to that uh, fall 2019, so in August actually. We're testing it out right now, and we should have a test instance available by May 
for everybody to test out and see what's working and what's not. Uh, some of, so that's what's really going on at, as far as IT perspective. Um, there is one thing I want to say, which is if anybody has any problems as far as IT is concerned, just throw in a ticket. If you don't know, if you feel like, oh, I don't want to waste our time, just throw in a ticket. You know, a lot of the stuff that people come up to me and say, hey, I'm having this problem, well, how long have you been having it? Oh, six months. <laughs> well, tell us what it is. And we'll, there's no problem. There's no such thing as a done ticket. Well, um, Nance? First off, how would you recommend to the new faculty how would you throw in a ticket? What do they need to do in the email that will start the ticket? And secondly, then, we'll go ahead and ask that. <laughs> okay, so I try to make it as easy as possible. There's multiple ways of throwing a ticket in. The official way is to go to our website, which is helpdesk.barstow.edu, where you'll sign in, and it'll be the same sign in as your single sign on sign in. And you just hit create a new ticket, put all your information in, and the ticket will be automatically updated and you'll be notified via email. Now, that's usually that's a little harder and takes a little bit longer. You can actually just email helpdesk at barstow.edu, and that does the same thing. Uh, we recently updated our ticket system um, for the new faculty and staff members. You wouldn't realize it, but for the people who have been here for a minute, it was very, I guess the way to say it, this is very ugly. You know, you can understand what people were saying, what was going on, so it's a little bit prettier now. <laughs> My question and concern is to do with our hybrid and our online students who, and I know we've had some private emails going back and forth, uh, and I know Tim, uh, Tim had an email said, told me that um, as soon as he knew more, he would give, uh, send out an email with more definitive an answer for everybody. I'm just curious if you're able to answer that now or would you still wait for the email from Tim? So we're, we're all, uh, IT is going to send out a reminder email for everybody that's not here. But like I said, everybody was kind of worried, you know, three days, that's too much for the students. So we went back to the contractors and said, can we make it less? And that's the Saturday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. So it only, just in, just and in the morning. Just in the morning, as long as everything goes okay. Thank you. Thank no you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> So is there any other questions, anything? All right. Brenda, thank you, Bryce, and the whole technology team. You guys are doing a wonderful job. We really appreciate you're there for all of us in every capacity. So thank you. Uh, next, I've been hearing about this uh, team that's been working on really promoting our athletics. I've been hearing, I mean, it just sounds very energetic and very fun. So I'm looking forward to getting an update on what is going on and what we can expect. So we have uh, Rachel Kirkpatrick. Amanda Simpson, Melissa Meadows, and Joanne Garcia to tell us what's going on. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, like she said, it really is a team. We have a big group of people that kind of started with Karen and Amanda having a really helpful conversation about how we want to incorporate more of the community and more of our student body into our athletic events because if you have happened to have been to any of our athletic events, there's not actually many. People there to support. We kind of want to grow that school spirit, um, and kind of like Joanne's been saying, we used to have a lot of that, and so we want to continue to grow it. Um, so we've actually been working basically for this first go round is with our home basketball games, um, making them more of a com uh, community event. And so on your tables, you have a little handout that basically is going to be posted everywhere around um, the community as well. And so each time is actually a theme night. 
Um, we are hosting different groups. As you can see, one is a junior high night, a high school night, a youth night, and a military appreciation night. Um, so for each of those, we're actually going to have three fun giveaways. Um, we also will be hosting a tailgate prior, an hour prior to tip off for every single one of them, where it's free food and drinks to everybody that attends, just trying to get as many people here and incorporated into the event as possible. Um, lots of fun goodies to give away. And like we said, we'll be doing um, either for like the junior high school, those type of things, we'll have entertainments such as uh, a band, we'll have uh, the high school cheerleaders, we'll actually have competitive cheerleaders will be doing um, their performances. So it's definitely going to be much more of an interactive, exciting thing. And then um, also a military appreciation night where we really get to focus on um, those that are involved with the community members. So we really encourage you and your families and your friends to kind of spread the word and get more involved and kind of as, oh, it's free, it's all free. So come enjoy, you get lots of free things. Um, but spread the word and please uh, get as many people to come as possible because we definitely think that this could be a really fun uh, couple of events and then it's just going to continue to roll out as we go into um, baseball <laughs> and softball season so we can continue to have more fun events for that. And the arts. Oh yes, absolutely. And it's going to basically just be able to <laughs> incorporate everybody and get everyone involved in the different events that we have going on at the school to get more people up onto the campus. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, did you want me? So we're starting off with athletics, and but we're going to be moving to other areas of campus. So like with Amy Ross and her stuff that she does, with you know the performing arts center and things like that, we'll be tapping into that stuff on our next go around, hopefully for um, maybe the fall semester, so we can start incorporating more community events and have theme nights for different things for people to actually come out to the campus. So. Starting athletics, moving to other places on campus. So, we'll do the <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and we are giving these items away to the first 500 people in attendance. And yes, we are hoping to have that many people. So, again, don't get worried and come and enjoy a night out. Ed, what's coming to the package? We have tons of stuff coming to the pack. Amy Ross, for can you hear the piano tune around here in the hallway? Oh man, it's going to be fresh and pretty for you for your classroom this afternoon. So, sorry, he was supposed to do this piano first and then the band room piano, but we got reversed a little bit, so we had to throw him out in the hallway. Oh well. Performing Arts Center, man, are we busy. This weekend, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, 7 o'clock, we are having the You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, or actually Charlie Brown and Friends. It's a 45-minute show for $3. Kids are free. $3. Bring the family, okay? Just show up, have a great time, 45 minutes. It's the show that we did for Barstow Unified School District and Silver Valley. We have uh, Newberry Springs coming and T-Port Intermediate from... Uh, um, uh, Fort Irwin is also coming down. They're coming down 9.30 for the next 20 days. I have a cast that is performing the 45-minute show, and then we're taking them on a tour of the facility. They're going to end up in the band room, learn 16 bars of one of the songs, and then they're going to go to the, the uh, dance studio, learn a little choreography, come back to the main theater. We're going to put every light we own on those kids, <laughs> kindergarten through third grade, and make them perform for the parent chaperones and the teachers that are there. By the time we're finished with this project, 2,270 kids will have seen Charlie Brown and have seen our entire pack. So we're really excited about that. Um, also Sunday at 2. Okay? So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, public performances at 7 for $3, and then Sunday at 2 o'clock. The next weekend is going to be um, oh my gosh, went right out of my head. Oh, Pinocchio. Yes, January 25, Friday night and Saturday at 12 noon. This coming Monday, we have a group from Missoula Children's Theater, Missoula, Montana, that's coming in, just two people. They're coming in a bright red truck, and they're bringing all the scenery, all of the costumes, all of the makeup, everything with them. The only thing they're missing is the cast. So... It, they are casting the show Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock 
and they're looking for 50 to 60 kids to cast. They put them in costumes. They rehearse Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The show goes up Friday. So it's January 21 through 26. Yes, the dates are right. It's only one week that that happens. Saturday, February 2, Anthony Hernandez, Illusions. This is, he has a residency at the Lawrence Welk Theater in Escondido, and he's coming up here to do some amazing things. He's going to be in a straight jacket inside a 55 gallon drum of water. He's going to escape locks and all kinds of stuff. He is an amazing magician, and he's going to be doing a hunk of his show in Spanish. So, solamente espanol for just a little bit. So, uh, he'll help interpret for that. So, that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to have him. Uh, February 22 through 24, we have Steel Magnolias coming here to the Performing Arts Center. Uh, and then March 1, Vocal Flash. But more about that the next time. So, we are busy. Get on board. We'll see you at the next show. Thank you, Ed. It's really great having all the youngsters come up to the Performing Arts Center. You are a very patient, very generous spirited man to have over 2,000 little kids come. Not all okay. at once. <laughs> <laughs> so, over a period of time. Thank you. Sounds like a lot of fun. So I have about 10 minutes left, so I ordered this agenda, not leaving a whole lot of time for you to listen to me talk to you. Um, but I did want to highlight some accomplishments from last fall. And I just want to say, I'm going to run through this really quickly, probably about as quickly as Ed just made announcements. So I will also be sending out an email to all of the college. And it's really just an opportunity to reflect on the good work from last fall as we move into spring. and. Um, you know, uh, really, it's just for me to kind of, kind of from my vantage point to just point out all of the good work, the way that it's impacting the college, kind of from a strategic level, um, really advancing the college in ways that are will continue to support our students with their outcomes that we set for them and for our Barstow community, as well as to support the development of our people and to strengthen really the infrastructure that enables us all to do our work in supporting students and the community. So if I've left anything off when I run through this today, because I don't want to hold you long, I know some of you, faculty especially, are teaching. Um, like I said, I'll, I will highlight it in an email so that you'll have it. But really, I, I chunk it into five main areas. So the first one is really our core offerings to students. It's you know the great curriculum reset. That work, that foundational work, we're going through every single course that we offer reviewing it, revising it, getting up to the chancellor's office, tremendous. Um, and that really sets us up well for guided pathways work. So I want to really, again, thank the faculty and the support staff for all of that wonderful work. Um, that's going to lead us into the movement. So all of those things, um, 8705, as you know, has been a huge challenge for all of the colleges in the state. Bravo for you all for embracing that, especially our math and English faculty, the Teaching and Learning Support Center being prepared, the creative uh, bridge course, and we're piloting, in, piloting it, it. And fingers crossed, Tim, but you know what? You know, you'll learn some things and then it'll continue to get better. So this is wonderful work. Um, I would say enrollment management, really the work with the schedule, phenomenal. We're creating a more efficient schedule, a student's friendly schedule. This is wonderful, and we will, we will reap the benefits of that as it continues to be refined. I know the deans, the faculty, I'm looking at Lisa, Heather's not here, but um, lots of wonderful work. Um, that's great. Distance Ed will completely transition to Canvas. Uh, faculty have had lots of professional development and really uh, making our online courses continue to be just top notch. Adult education, I don't know if you all know, we have the consortium for the Barstow area, adult education, we partner with Unified, uh, that's Barstow, Silver Valley, and Baker, and our college, we are now this starting this year the fiscal agent for the entire grant. Um, we're doing some great work. I don't know if Elias is here, but he's, there's Elias, so he's our interim director of adult education. So we're really working in partnership to serve um, adult learners and all of the community and try to make it more clear for those individuals who need their GED, their support um, to either transition into college 
or go into um, CT programs or jobs. So this is a great service to our community. Um, contract Ed, we know we have BNSF now, we have the welding shop here right on campus, uh, CTE folks. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity for BNSF employees to go through this intensive two week training right here on our campus with our instructors. Joseph, I see you're, you're here. Thank you, I know you've been a big part of that. Um, and there's just all kinds of opportunities that are going to be opened up, I think, for the college with regard to contract education and economic development. Strong workforce, we've hired our CT project director, that's Todd Bartholo, I don't know if he's here today. Um, but um, all of Sandy's folks um, at State Street, there's, I think, 17 different projects that are being managed to wisely utilize the resources that are coming from the state through strong workforce. We've had lots of efforts for economic development. So it's not just Barso, but we're working regionally. Um, there's a group of individuals who have been very consistent in attending meetings. So we have Sandy Thomas, Denise Tasley, um, Paul Courtney. We even have a trustee, Fred Baca, attends regularly, where we're really looking to advance economic development um, in Victorville, Apple, Apple Valley, Hesperia. So I want you to know that the college is very much involved and I think really serving as a leader. I think we're really stepping out in front of Victor Valley College, in fact. So um, you'll continue to hear more about those efforts. Our support services, that's sort of the second category. Fantastic, just some highlights. We're really happy, the, um, you know, the WOW, the, uh, wealth, the week of welcome orientation. I'm proud to announce that folks um, who have been involved with that submitted a proposal to present um, in Los Angeles this uh, spring at the, uh, it's a Chief Student Services, uh, Chief Student Support Services Officers meeting. Um, so they submitted a proposal, it was accepted. So the rest of California gets to learn about our wonderful program here and model it, which really rivals any uh, four-year university's type of um, week-long orientation. So good work, and this will be great to hear how your presentation goes. Um, I also want to comment on the Fuel Up for Finals. Really cool. I mean, how wonderfully supportive for our students and faculty to be able to make sure that students are well-fed. The Ziesta, that's really a really innovative idea. Um, again, just so student-focused. I also want to just comment on the implementation of the Early Alert Starfish. Um, lots of colleges, it takes forever to get that thing going, but uh, folks here, uh, uh, student services, working with faculty, it's been piloted and it's being used broadly and effectively, so we will see the benefits for student outcomes on that. Uh, the third major category is really hiring and supporting some wonderful people. So right off the bat, I just want to thank our HR staff and vice president. We've done an amazing amount of recruitment. It's, it's, it's phenomenal for a small school. It's an awful lot of work. And you can see we're bringing some wonderful people in. So thank you, Rosalinda, Paulette, Lyle, I don't know if Alejandro is here, <coughs> Lorena. Um, it's really, you know, the people is what make this college. And this staff is part of what's um, helping us to um, bring in good people and to be very mindful of the professional development of all of our groups, faculty, classified staff, and management has had some wonderful development opportunities. You remember we had the Agile Forum starting off um, this year. We want to continue to promote and support our associate professors so we've learned to be more up and, and appropriate with the, the way we talk about our wonderful associate uh, uh, faculty. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, uh, the next category of things, so four out of five, I'm probably close to running out of time, so I'm going quick here, I apologize. Um, we talk about our organizational um, infrastructure. I, I, I think of our contract negotiations. So just recently, CSEA, we reached a tentative agreement. I want to thank our classified leadership working with our district team. Um, that will be hopefully soon coming to the board. So that was a wonderful collaborative effort, and we hope that it benefits our classified staff in numerous ways, as well as our college in support of our students. Um, you know, we put together a strategic plan in a phenomenal amount of, a short amount of time um, to do what we were required to do to align with the Chancellor's vision for success. 
but I want to thank everybody for your efforts in making that happen. And that will guide us as we move forward for the next five years and help us with our um, resource allocation processes, et cetera. Um, safety assessment. I know safety is a big concern for everybody in our college and really everywhere on all campuses. So we have, um, we have hired some professionals to conduct a safety assessment of our campus. So that information is being utilized and we are going to be prioritizing some recommendations very soon and providing training for everybody so that we're certain that we're all feeling and are actually secure and safe and know how to respond um, if we happen to have any emergencies to respond to. So that's up and coming. Um, technology and facilities. You know, there's been a lot of facilities, projects that's been happening. So I just want to highlight some really key ones from last fall. I mentioned the BNSF welding shop, the old fitness center. It's a phenomenal um, uh, welding shop. Uh, recently, we have uh, modified the counseling space so that we can hire a mental health counselor and student success advisor because the college you remember won a $300,000 grant, uh, mental health services grant, so we'll be able to actually actualize that. The Vet Center, also a $100,000 grant to expand that resource, so there's been facilities expansion. Um, what else? The Teaching Learning uh, Support Center, there's been work happening there, and that's sort of an ongoing project. I know Tim has phases mapped out, and he's working closely with facilities. Fort Irwin, that's another um, big improvements that have been happening. Um, we currently, I don't think Robbie is able to be out here, but he's been working with facility staff. It's really looking wonderful out there. And we're seeing some increased enrollment and um, some happy people. So just want to thank the staff in doing that work. And finally, um, the fifth area is just the amount of community building that we have done, um, especially over the last semester. So things like, first of all, the PAC performance is wonderful. Um, Ed shared some of them, but he reported to me, I think from when the PAC opened, you had the Fab Four was the grand opening uh, performance. You exceeded the number of tickets sold with, um, was MC Magic was the entertainer? So, I mean, I keep hearing in the community, people are loving coming on campus. There's just such a wide range of performances. So it just provides a great deal of entertainment and culture for us at the college, but also the community. Um, other wonderful things um, in the community, uh, I want to mention, it was actually last spring, the Be Well um, uh, uh, Health and Fitness Fair. So I know that we're gearing up for the second annual of that. Um, also, the WaterWise Festival that happened on campus. Uh, we have been nominated, or that event has been nominated for the Chamber Event of the Year. So that's kind of cool. It happened right on campus. So we're, we're really opening up the campus, and people are feeling welcome, engaged. And I'm very proud that everybody pitches in. We have volunteers from all over that help with all of these. And that brings me to um, another event. Actually, we're planning it now and started a little bit in fall for a veterans um, resource fair in April, where we're going to, we're partnering with the Barstow Community Coalition and the campus once again is, is um, opening its arms to support a number of providers to help um, provide uh, resources to our veterans. So that's coming up. Um, and also just the kinds of activities last fall, the guest speakers that we have had, um, uh, and the events. I think the true to you, that was near and dear to my heart. I think it really signaled to the community that we are an open, inclusive campus that wants to support everybody, make people feel very comfortable. We had a nice Veterans Day event. Uh, I know Linda Puglisi was a guest speaker. So just all of these kind of community building events that people can come and celebrate. Um, uh, individuals not only on campus but throughout the community. And I just want to thank everybody who participates in those. I'm looking at Joanne. I know I think at every one of those events, uh, the energy level is just crazy and the excitement and the enthusiasm. So it makes everybody um, proud to be part of this campus. And I know I certainly am. So just wanted to thank you all for that. 
and to, how am I doing on time? I'm four minutes over, I apologize. But thank you for your patience um, with that, and I hope you have a great semester. And um, I don't know, it's just cool seeing all of you out here, so I'm very happy to be here. So have a great day, and we'll see you next month.